Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about the specificity, structure, and function of antibodies, um, one of which is illustrated here. And you should notice right away that it looks remarkably similar to the B cell receptor. So in fact, those are both immunoglobulins, which is a class of immune um, complex made up of several proteins. In this case, um, again, there's two antigen binding sites, but the tails are not inserted in the membrane like they would be if this was a B cell receptor. Instead, antibodies are secreted by the B cells after they've been differentiated or activated and differentiated into plasma cells. Uh, they make and then secrete these antibodies into the fluids and um, the serum to fight infections. So they have antigen binding sites though in specificity which is identical to the B cell receptor present on the cell that produced them. I want to again in this case draw attention to these tails. Later on we'll see that these do serve a function even though they're not involved in actually binding to antigen. So what are some functions of antibodies? Uh, some of these we've alluded to already or discussed in some detail in a previous lecture. And this should sound familiar. Um, the, one of the mechanisms in which complement is activated, in fact, in the classical activation pathway, um, an antigen, in this case on the surface of, let's say, a bacterium or maybe a Neisseria, some sort of, <clears throat> obviously, a bacterium. Here's a phospholipid bilayer has an antigen on the surface which is bound to an antibody. In this case, this is a pentameric, which means five member antibody called IgM. This is recognized by one of the C1, one of the complement proteins called C1. Not shown here, but there's a whole cascade then of enzymes and proteins which are cleaved and recombined. Some of those mediate fever and inflammation, but others, as you recall, insert themselves into the membrane of the target pathogen, forming this membrane attack complex. So again, essentially a pore, which allows the rapid influx of um, water and lysis of the cell. So activation of complement is one important function of antibodies. Um, two other ones, these are kind of related. One is neutralization. In this case, an antibody which has been produced and secreted in response to an infection by um, a bacterium such as this one will then bind to those same epitopes on the surface of that bacterium at a site of infection. And by binding to these um, proteins, which may act as receptors, then actually prevent the bacterium from further attaching to or colonizing tissues. Uh, the antibodies may serve similar functions with respect to toxins. By binding to certain toxins, it could prevent those toxins from reaching cells and, and acting upon those uh, and viruses also. The adhesion proteins on those, if coated with antibody, would certainly prevent entry of this particular virus into another cell and um, thus these are helping to stop the propagation of the viral infection. So that's neutralization that is kind of stopping or neutralizing the pathogen from continuing to attach to or affect host cells. But a related function is opsonization that you see here. And something similar happens where the organism, the pathogen gets coated by antibody, but in this case the tail, which I showed you in the previous slide, has a region um, the, called the FC region that attaches to a receptor protein on the outer membrane of a phagocyte and actually enhances phagocytosis of the pathogens by that mechanism. So anything that's opsonized is more effectively cleared by phagocytes. So the last two ways that we'll discuss um, regarding antibody function include agglutination. Again, in this case, we have binding of the antibody to cell surface um, molecules on these bacteria, but because the antibody molecule has two places where it can bind, you notice that they can actually bind, one can bind to one cell, 
and the other arm of that antibody can bind to a neighboring cell. The net effect being if you have a bunch of these antibodies in a suspension with a bacterium, that this is a clumping or agglutination that occurs. Um, this slows the mis dissemination of the bacteria through the body and lycopsinization enhances phagocytosis and clearance of those from the body. The last thing that I want to discuss is excuse me, a mechanism called antibody-dependent antibody cellular toxicity. This is abbreviated ADCC. In the illustration, um, it's also found in your text as shown down here. The way this works is that the antibody, once bound to some sort of organism, and it could be maybe something too big to phagocytose, but if once the antibody is attached to it, a natural killer lymphocyte, which also has an FC receptor protein, will recognize that this antibody is bound to a target organism and then releases the perforin and the granzymes that result in death of the target cell. <clears throat> so lots of different ways in which antibodies can help enhance immune function. And in your mastering, you will find um, a number of those explained in an animation, which would be a good time to maybe go and look at that now before we proceed onward. So now that we know something about antibody structure and function, I just want to reiterate that we actually have many different um, classes of antibodies in the body, and they have that same kind of basic structure, but we'll see that there's some variations on that, and they also have um, can be differentiated on the particular functions and locations um, that they're found in. So just to summarize this, and there's a table coming up in the next slide, IgM is the first antibody produced in response to an infection. That's that pentameric form with the five um, um, Y-shaped molecules attached at the center. The most common, longest lasting antibody is IgG, and this is the one we typically would typically be used in serology tests such as ELISA's. IgA's, which are associated with body secretions, such as specifically those in the intestinal mucosa. IgE was um, involved in the body's response to parasitic infection um, and also can um, mediate allergic reactions. And IgD, whose exact function is not exactly known, but it may serve as a type of B cell receptor. So you won't be expected to know all the details of these five different classes, but those are summarized here in Table 16.3 in your text. It again, is that visual representation of IgM. Um, with some notes here that one of the first ones produced. And um, act to, so it's active in complement activation, neutralization, and agglutination. But a, f a fairly small percentage of serum antibodies, if we look down here, we see that these IgGs up to 80%. So clear clearly the dominant class um, of antibodies and the longest lived. So, e so these can last, <clears throat> approximate half-life is um, 23 days, which is the time it takes for the concentration to reduce by half. And look at all the, again, functions that IgG is involved with including not only the ones that we mentioned, um, but also this is the type of antibody which can cross the placenta to protect the fetus while it's in utero. IgA, this is the one that's secreted in, to among other things, the intestinal lumen, but also involved in secretions such as tears, saliva, um, and in the mother's milk. So this has a quite a bit shorter half-life. IgE, as we said, involved in allergies, so these are found on mast cells, involved in allergic reactions, and lastly, IgD. And you notice this is a very minor component of the antibody population. Before we move on from B cells, I just want to make sure you understand that um, <clears throat> one of the issues that the body has to deal with, just as it needs to do the same, something similar with D cells, is to make sure that the B cells, which contain receptors um, that may self-react to the body's 
own molecules somehow become deactivated or removed from the population. Otherwise, autoimmune disorders and um, a number of other problems can result. The, excuse me, the actual process is similar to deletion of B cells, but the, it, the whole screening process occurs, <clears throat> in this case, in the red bone marrow. So during the differentiation where these B cells are produced, we'll sort of look here. Here's the B cell receptor, and notice that they look physically different. Um, and the screening procedure works basically where any cell that has, um, if a B cell attaches to an antigen on one of the host's own cells, that's deemed autoreactive and then is, under, um, is killed by the process of apoptosis. If the cells, the newly formed B cells, do not react with the autoantigens, those then enter the blood vessels and travel to the spleen or other lymphoid organ organs to await either encounters with antigens or activations by the T cells.